Pokemon Yellow is a game designed around spending time with your Pikachu, raising its friendship to grow a closer bond with your partner. But I have no bonds. I'm not shackled by any partner. And because of that, I've decided to see if it was possible to beat a Pokemon Yellow Hardcore Nuzlocke using only bug types. Will we make it through? Well, let's find out. By the way, this challenge and several others that'll be coming out quite soon were streamed on twitch.tv slash chaoticmeatballtv. Link is in the description, as I'm probably streaming another challenge there right now. So with that established, we walk into the grass, get our useless Pikachu, and shove him straight into the box after heading into Viridian Forest. Calling my shot immediately, since I know my luck is terrible. Alright chap, first encounter. Uh, if it's Metapod, we're just gonna re-roll because Metapod doesn't have any attacking moves and that wouldn't be fair. And I'm not resetting the game to before the point of getting the first encounter. So we are just gonna lock- See, this is why I said it, because I knew the first encounter was gonna be Metapod. No, the first encounter's Caterpie. I nicknamed this Buggo after one of my most recent subscribers, so if you want a Pokemon named after you, you know which button to hit. And with Caterpie in hand, it's already time to grind for Brock. I know this run is going to be ridiculously hard with a terrible typing and mediocre moves, so we're gonna need all of the advantage we can get, hence why we're training on level 2 Pidgey on Route 1. See, Generation 1 works off of stat experience rather than effort values, so when we KO a Pokemon, their base stats are applied to a pool of up to 65,535 points per stat on each Pokemon. Pidgey's the most optimal for now, as it yields 15 EXP per KO with 40 HP, 45 attack, 40 defense, 35 special, and 56 speed. In short, by the Elite Four, this should net us about 39 additional points in each stat for each of our Pokemon as long as we do this optimally. After that grind, we're at level 12, the level cap for Brock, and likely the hardest battle we'll be facing until mid to late game. Alright Brock, don't be an asshole, Geodude. Alright, confusion? Hopefully only one. We might need two. We do two, need two. That's fine. Just please do not miss the range here. It is definitely a range. F*** you. 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 you. Every time. Range. 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 Confusion. We do outspeed. Hopefully half. K.O. Oh, it's fine. Okay, we're good. Thank you for being nice. I appreciate it. Even in a live setting, I can't seem to avoid ranges trying to be the bane of my existence, but no longer. I will not be shackled by these damage rolls. The dice will never come back to bite me ever again. Surely, right? Our trek through Route 3 was a breeze, one you might get to enjoy while wearing shorts, as they're comfy and easy to wear. Getting us to Mount Moon and our second encounter... Can you, like... Stay in the f***ing ball, you piece of Yeah, I knew you liked when I talked down to you. That's weird. Sometimes I just need to learn to shut the f*** up. Now, of course, we won't be able to go back to Route 1 if we progress further beyond Mount Moon. So back out we go to optimally gain stat experience with our nearly useless bugs, raising our level just a little bit before heading on back to grab the Helix Fossil. You know why. Go and praise him in the comments. On our way out, we've got a Jesse and James fight, very fun additions as references to the anime, but unthreatening additions as we're able to sweep on by them and head into Cerulean City. We've got a big problem on our hands. The rivals team here, while consisting of all normal types, does happen to have a Spearow that we can't throw Paris out there whatsoever against. This means we've got to hope and pray that confusion is enough. All right, bossy, Spearow, you are the scariest Pokemon we've seen so far. But we outspeed. Can we please two-shot? No, we cannot. Just use that again. Just use that again. Just use it again. We'll be safe. Just use it again. Oh, you stupid moron. Oh, you stupid moron. You are a perfect bussy. Oh, my God. Sandshrew, tack, or scratch and sand attack. Going out to uh, Paris to shake off that... Uh, Oh, it failed! Oh! Oh, that's unfortunate. Okay, that's fine. We're not gonna miss, chat. We're not gonna miss, I swear. Alright, so Sandshrew's a uh, specialist piss poor, so we're just gonna KO. Alright, so this has Hyper Fang, which is a little threatening. Um, 
but that's fine. We could just double confusion this and KO, probably. Yeah. And it's just gonna use tackle anyway. It, uh, it might use quick attack here. Oh, it didn't. It didn't go for quick attack, so we take less damage. And then all we have left is Eevee, which we should be able to KO with a couple of uh, confusions. Uh, let's go for one more. Okay. If it uses another sand attack, I'll swap here. Okay, now we'll swap. Uh, wrong, wrong button. Scratch should KO from this range? Can we not miss, please? Thank you. Perfect. Cha defeated Bussy, as is tradition. And just like that, this Bussy has been pumped and dumped faster than you can say happy pride. With him out of the way, our next big threat isn't actually Misty herself, rather the junior trainer in front of her, as she has a level 19 Goldeen with Peck. Paired with Supersonic, this is a pretty nasty trainer that nearly wipes my team, mixing confusion and a critical hit, but we're able to survive by the skin of our teeth thanks to Sleep Powder. With her defeated though, we're finally able to finish off Route 25, grab Venonat as our third of five encounters, and take out Misty after a quick grind on Route 4. Since we don't have access to Route 1 encounters for now, we've got to be content with 66 EXP from the level 8 Spiro on Route 4. All good though, it's, it's not like we need stat experience to take out Misty, right? Alright, so Staryu only has Tackle and Water Gun, so this isn't going to be able to do too much damage. So we're going to swap to Dance Flam. This has great special, so Water Gun's not going to do too much. And then we swap into JB. Now everybody is going to receive, hopefully, I think, enough experience to, uh, to level up. So we should be fine. And then from here, we can just Leech Life. It does X Defend, which is a little irritating, but that's fine. Are your Pokemon named after subs correct? There's only two more encounters in this run, though, and the next one is in Celadon City, so... If we do get a sub by then, uh, we'll have a name, but we haven't gotten one yet. Look at that. Easy clap. Dansplam, 22. See, chat? Biggest brain on the planet. Starmie. Has Bubble Beam. So we're gonna go for Stun Spore. Now, we might be able to get some uh, extra HP off of, like, Paralysis. You have a plan for Blaine. No. Uh, Dig. My plan just became Dig. I forgot this was super effective, by the way. Oh, there's the X Defend. She's like, ah, he's outpacing me in terms of healing. No damage! Technically no damage! Fully healed by the end of the fight. No wonder Fire and Leaf Green Misty had confusion. That was far too easy. The mid game is quite the steamroll for our trio of bug friends as we get the TM for Dig from the Rocket Grunt and Cerulean and Body Slam from the SSN, making Paris a nearly unstoppable force going into our next rival fight. Not quite Parasect, though, as I realized it can learn Spore at level 27 rather than 30 for Parasect. Sure, it's only three levels, but you can never be too safe when it comes to this tight of a Nuzlocke. Then again, my definition of safety is doing something really dumb and random that doesn't help us in the slightest, aka learning Spore before Erica's level cap, despite the attack not working on grass types. But we can just walk headfirst into three potential critical hits in a row that'll surely never come to pass. With my stupidity out of the way, though, we're able to clear out our rival by overpowering with Butterfree, Surge's lone Raichu with our level 28, newly evolved Parasect with a super effective dig. Three down, five in the league to go. One easily navigable rock tunnel later and we're spit out into Lavender Town and eventually Celadon City, the home of our fourth encounter in Scyther. It's purchasable from the game corner and much more useful than Pinsir. I'll certainly take another physical attacker, though with Wing Attack being the only stab flying move we get and it being 35 power in Gen 1, I'm sure we'll need a bit more support with moves like Sword Stance down the line. With Scyther in hand, we're free to walk into Team Rocket's base of operations and beat the piss out of each and every single one of them, including Jesse and James once again before reaching the head honcho himself. Alright chap, let's beat him up. Hey mob boss, Psh. No! Psh. no, no, why, why are you beating me up? Because you're an asshole, basically the, uh, the gist of this rivalry here, you're an asshole. Psh. Dink, die. 
Um, thank you. Thank you for not proving me wrong. Level 30? Woo! Level 30! Alright, we got Rhyhorn, and guess what Rhyhorn knows? Exclusively Horn Attack! No, it won't let me use Disable because it only has one attack. It would be funny. Are we really gonna KO a Rhyhorn with a Venonat? This is abysmal. Alright, so this does... Okay, uh, so crit won't kill. Now you choose to use the guard spell. Okay. Alright, so this is the Pokemon to actually be afraid of. Uh, I guess we just go into Tug. That should do, like, nothing. I was proven wrong. I'm okay to, uh, I'm, I'm fine to be proven wrong every now and again. I think we found a winner, folks. Double critical hit in a row. I like this already. Yeah, Giovanni stood no chance in the face of our nasty insects. You can't say that I blame him. And the same goes with rival Bussy, as... Honestly, I've stopped taking him seriously. We're fighting Bussy! We're fighting another Bussy. Every rival's a Bussy. Yeah, you should hit yourself now! I didn't connect! How did he learn to use my move better than me? <laughs> Zoink, Scoob! It's gonna use Harden and then we're just gonna confusion. It's just gonna go, oh my god. Harden! 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 Harden's finally coming in clutch! You know it's a joke of a fight when I start pulling out multiple bits for the battle. With Bussy blasted once again, we're clear to clean out Pokemon Tower and beat Erica so hard she'll need at least three blunts to recover from it. Parasect is able to easily dispatch Tangela with a mix of Body Slam and Leech Life, with the follow-up Weepin' Bell being a one-shot with Leech Life since for some reason, Game Freak decided Poison should be weak to Bug in Generation 1. But when we got to her last Pokemon in Gloom, the air changed pretty much immediately upon the threat of acid. Please one shot. Ho oh, ho ho ho! That was close! I almost had a heart attack, chat! But we survived to live another day, as Parasect is able to get a near one shot with Leech Life, letting me swap into Scyther, take another Acid, and KO with Slash to win the fight. We've got Rival 5, Giovanni, Koga, and Sabrina back to back with a level cap of 50. And hilariously, the first of those is the only real threat. Koga has three Venonats and a Venomoth, and Sabrina has Abracadabra and Alakazam. Sure, that last one is a little worrisome, but with a Scyther that can set up against Abra with Sword Stance, I'm sure to win, especially once Pinsir is added to the party, now that we've gained access to the Safari Zone. And yes, I did also buy it from the Celadon Game Corner since, once again, cheating is based. But with the proper prep completed, we're ready for the gauntlet. So we got Sand Slash here, level 38. Easily gonna die to Mega Drain here. Super effective, stab, plus uh, it's, oh wow, it survived. Please don't poison. Thank you. We're not gonna recover much from this, but that's fine. We'll get like three HP. Oh, six, nice. Uh, plus we'll KO Cloister, so yeah, we just go back to full here. This is a full 10 levels, so that helps. Uh-oh. No, not my attack, shit. Alright, got Magneton, that's fine. I'm safe to stay in, because this is an 8 level difference. We'll go Dig, he'll go for Tackle, because he's dumb, and we'll KO. Hopefully. Alright, good. Uh, Dig is 100 power in Gen 1, so I think it's safe to use Dig. I need to check. I need to Calc Flareon here. Alright, Flareon, what is your base speed? 65. I'm five levels above. What is Parasect's base speed? 30. I'm swapping. Alright, so the best way to do this, let's take a look at who's the highest special. 117 is pretty good. 120, or it's 126 is pretty freaking good too. Uh, so we're going to go into Cole here. 
Because we, we kept it as Venonat until level 43. Uh, I mean, we were going to swap out of that anyway. Uh, we kept it into Venonat until level 43 so that it would learn Psychic. And hopefully we can land a Sleep Powder. If we land a Sleep Powder here, we probably just win. Cool. Sleep Powder again? <laughs> two for two. All right. And we should be able to two-shot with Psychic. Oh, we get, okay, we outspeed, so it's fine. So we can three-shot. Simple as that, chap. Nothing to it. Once again, we have defeated the biggest of bussies. He's gone. We're discussing a vital business proposition. Yeah, and I'm discussing putting a foot in your ass, so get over here and get your shit kicked in. I don't know why I'm so violent towards Giovanni. Probably because he's a violent man. And violence breeds violence. But in the end, it has to be this way. I mean, did you expect anything different from Nidorino? Of course it was going to die. Uh, so, Rhyhorn has no rock-type moves, so we're good. Uh, Persian. Okay. Sure. I think we can just get away with swapping into Tug. And we can just slash this thing to death. Of course, we won't be able to do that to Rhyhorn, but that's fine. That's pretty good. We'll bring in JB. We'll just Mega Drain it. Bring back all my health from taking a Horn Attack or Stomp here. Horn Attack. Does nothing. Mega Drain. Easily done. And then Nidoqueen's Queen's going to go for Poison Sting. Because that's quad effective on... Parasect here. So if we swap into Venomoth, we will take neutral damage, and then we can hit it with a Psychic. Maybe KO, but it is a Nidoqueen, it is defensive, it is bulky, or it just goes for Scratch, you know, it could just go for Scratch. Uh, at level at level 41, why? Wait. I'm looking at Bulbapedia, and it says it has Body Slam, but it has, it has Scratch. I was prepared for Body Slam. Okay. It's time for me to lose the game. Are you ready? Yes. Venonat. Wow, that's crazy. Anyway, Psychic? Dang, that's pretty good damage. Venonat, alright. Oh, Venonat. Wow, that's really crazy. Alright, I have stat experience, so I'm faster. Bye-bye. <laughs> Critical hit. Just rub salt in the wound. That's, yep, there we go. Four turn battle. No attacks on me. Bye-bye, Koga. Once you learn the pattern for Sabrina's gym, it's just, it's, it's just Jover, you know. Anyway, this thing has teleport and flash. So, oh, I didn't even, I didn't even level up. I forgot to, I forgot to level up. All right, so the funny thing is here, you know, Swords Dance. And then we can go Focus Energy. Okay, you know, that's fine. Could you stop? Thank you. Did you just take the bottom left tile every time? Uh, no, it's just like you take three verticals and then the horizontal and then you're there. Alright, so we're gonna go Swords Dance. Focus Energy. So that we lower our critical hit ratio so that, so, so that Slash gets the boost off of uh, Swords Dance. 
Okay. Never mind. Cool. Go slash again. See? See, chat? Smart. Smart. Smart brain. Big brain. Humongous brain. Bye-bye. Oh, that one was a crit. I guess we just didn't need to try at all. We could have just clicked slash three times. With only two badges standing between me and the Elite Four, we've got one man to plan around, and his name is Blaine. The man that has the potential to burn down my dreams of becoming the Pokemon champion with bug types, to send them up in smoke due to how strong his super effective attacks are against my Pokemon. But surely I can dig up a way to win. Unfortunately, the only strategy I found wasn't dig, because the only strategy I had to relatively consistently pass this fight is by leading with Venomoth for Sleep Powder, abusing the fact that we have great specials so that if the first one misses, we can use another, then swap to Scyther and begin the Swords Dance sweep. I would have loved to start Parasect here due to Spore, but we're unable to outspeed, so throwing him out is a quad effective death sentence. But this is all theory and conjecture. Only one way to find out and see if this works. This should be easy enough. As long as we land the, s the Sleep Powder, I feel no pain. Alright, Ninetales. Because it can stay asleep from one to seven turns. And we have two Pokemon that can do Sleep Powder. Okay. Well, that doesn't count as a turn. So, we can swap into Tug. This is turn one. Just stay asleep. Thank you. Swords Dance. Swords Dance. Rewarded. We were rewarded, chat. Wing Attack. We're still slower! I thought the badge boost w uh, wait. Where do we get the badge boost for speed? Is it from Blaine? That'd be funny. Alright, perfect. One shot. Plus six. Plus stab. Makes sense. Alright, we're faster than Rapidash, thankfully. Wing attack manages to get the KO. And then all we have left is Arcanine. Which we are faster than. Blaine using a super potion. Oh, it's classic Blaine. Oh, you better have burn heal. No, sir, you better have a super potion. Oh, it's just classic. You stupid idiot. L plus ratio plus you're on fire. In a bad way. <laughs> classic Blaine. One of these days, I'm just gonna cosplay as him, do a quiz show with other Poketubers, and have my beverage just be a super potion due to how dumb the red, blue, and yellow AI can truly be. Speaking of dumb AI, Giovanni's last stand is inside of his gym and he's not having any more of this martial arts Pokemon wielding 10 year old bullshit beating both him and his Pokemon up. So, what does he decide to do? Nothing. He gets to make no decisions. I took his AI and manipulated it to never hit an offensive move with his lead, Doug Trio. Swapping between Scyther and Venomoth depending on if the former was hit with stand attack, then the latter would bait the ground move due to the partial poison typing, allowing me to go back into the flying type Scyther to avoid it. The only real downside here is that sand attack isn't a ground type move in Gen 1, but it ends up not being a problem as Giovanni wastes time with a guard spec, letting me finally get in and KO Doug Trio Persian before Nidoqueen enters third. Okay, so unfortunately, these guys have Thunder. Uh, so we're gonna go out into Mesters here, and I'm gonna tank a Thunder. Chat, I try my best. There's the Thunder. Please don't paralyze. That did nothing. That did literally nothing. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Here comes Nitto King. Also has Thunder, by the way. Uh, so we can... S 
Yeah. I was like, do I Swords Dance and then Vice Grip, or do I Slash? I think I just Slash. Yeah, that was correct. Alright, so the only scary thing is Rhydon has Rock Slide. But Rhydon is also slow as balls. His base speed is 40. This is what we do. Shit. Well, that's fine. If anything was gonna die, it was going to be Pinsir. Goodbye, Pinsir. You will not be missed. Goodbye, Rhydon. Alright, so we have lost 20% of our encounters. Uh, that's a little worrisome, but I don't think we were ever using Pinsir. Though I guess we are technically down an additional option for the League, but that option was really just going to be something to sack. Pinsir is just not good in this generation. Is four Pokemon enough to beat the League? That is the probably bigger question. Well, my past self certainly believed that it didn't matter in the slightest, so we should be fine. Emphasis on should. Before entering Route 22 for the last regular rival fight of the game, I made sure to level up my Pokemon to level 60, as the cap is 62 and none of the trainers in Victory Road are required, so there's no need to limit ourselves in our capacity to clean house. Sandslash dies to Parasex Mega Drain following a Spore, two Body Slams to Execute ends up tearing it down, Cloyster falls to a Mega Drain due to Paper Thin Special, Magneton dies to Super Effective Dig, Kadabra rests to a Physical Dig, and last but not least, Flareon is out and threatens our entire team with Flamethrower. I try swapping in a Venomoth since I know it can survive two non-critical Flamethrowers, but of course the first one has to get the burn, making it so I no longer can. My only other option is throwing in Butterfree and hoping that Sleep Powder is enough to let me get a follow-up KO with a few Psychics to win the day. Thankfully, Butterfree is fast and after taking a little over half from the switched in flamethrower, hitting Sleep Powder and three subsequent psychics is enough to win the last major battle before the league. And with that, Victory Road is quickly cleared. Preparations are set, and our team of four juiced up bugs are ready for five of the most difficult battles of their lives. It's now or never, let's take this title. Lorelei's first with Dugong, and I'm leading Scyther for the sweep with Hyper Beam, as two sword stances brings it up to plus four attack, though Aurora Beam does bring Scyther down to plus three. This was accounted for though, leaving Scyther to KO Dugong, Cloyster, Slowbro, Jinx, and Lapras in sequence to win. An easy win, but with Bruno in his lead Onyx, I can't establish the same win condition. Luckily, of course, Parasex got Mega Drain, and it's plenty enough to eat through Onyx's paper thin special defense taking advantage of that quad weakness to take it down in one shot. Second is Hitmonchan, and immediately my brain starts frying itself, focusing on Fire Punch here, despite Hitmonchan having absolute piss for special in this generation. Though, swapping in a Venom off the Spam Psychic was probably still the winning play. Missing two Psychics through a double team with third times the charm to KO. Meanwhile, Chat would like me to use Harden. I deleted Harden at this point, what do you want from me? Psychic annihilates Hitmonlee, leaving just one more Pokemon in Machamp, putting in its place with a critical Psychic to win. Agatha's third on the docket, and probably the second easiest of the bunch, surely because of how much poison hate we have on this team. Butterfree and Venomoth are both packing Psychic, while Parasect has Dig before Levitate was even a thing. And if worse comes to worst, Scyther has Wing Attack to make contact with these ghouls. Thankfully, it doesn't come down to that, as her lead Gengar falls to Parasect's dig, leading to Golbat. Vermeer is a swap into Venomoth into a Supersonic, so I'm out into Butterfree next to take a Wing Attack and land a Psychic to KO in one shot. Three left as Haunter comes out and immediately falls to the same, as does Arbok, leaving just Gengar number two. And to my surprise, this weak, early game bug was able to pull through, outspeeding a Gengar with only a two level difference, and delivering a massive critical psychic to get the one shot and win the fight. Never in my life would I have expected to see a Butterfree outspeed a Gengar, but that's the power of stat experience, baby. All that remains is Lance, and with a pretty similar boat to Lorelei. This time I'm leading Parasect to tank Hyper Beam from Lance's lead Gyarados, taking a measly 69 damage, nice, and using the slowness to my advantage as to not burn a turn of sleep once I use Spore, then swap into Scyther. 
From here, it's a hop, skip, and jump to lethal with three sword stances, as wing attack KOs Gyarados, and hyper beams for Dragonairs 1 and 2, Aerodactyl despite the resistance, and the Ace Dragonite for the quick win. All this leaves is a champion, 4 versus 6, and we've already got a death on our hands, so... There's nothing more to lose other than the run itself, and I'm damn sure not letting that happen. Still prefer the, uh, the Fire and Leaf Green version of this theme, though. I will say. They just had way too many sound channels to work with. Alright, Spore. Am I really gonna get away with this? <laughs> That'd be so funny. Okay, fast asleep. I think we're getting away with it. I think we're getting away with it. We don't have Harden anymore, chat! We got rid of Harden! Oh, we're getting away with plus six. Oh, we're getting away with plus six. Oh, perfect timing for you to die. <laughs> you think that's going to stop me? Die! <laughs> Actually, Alakazam, funnily enough, is his lowest level Pokemon. Kind of makes sense. I feel like they balanced that pretty well. That's good. Again? Okay, that's fine. This is just the sprite that Executor has now. Or in, like, it had in Gen 4. It's just the same one. Bye bye And we were worried about wiping, chat. We were worried about wiping. Uh, I was worried about wiping. You guys were talking about other stuff. See ya. Critical hit. Didn't even need the sword stances. Just needed a crit. Well, that was, uh... A little bit anticlimactic. I, I think I realized the power of Scyther at the end. <laughs> Despite massive odds against myself and the five limited encounters I had, just like that, I found myself in the champion's room, entering the Hall of Fame with Parasect, Scyther, Venomoth, and Butterfree. And our totally legitimate HMU w Thank you so much for watching the video. I really wanted to update my style of content since my break, and I think this is a great direction. Again, if you want to watch these runs live and get a Pokemon nicknamed after you, or if you just want to hang out and help me get Twitch partner, make sure to head over to my Twitch channel in the description below. Until I see you there, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you next time.